I started this project off with uh, some defect cherry cutoffs that I got at a cabinet store. And uh, here I am cutting the first piece that I'm going to use for the faceplate of the bank and uh, just trimming up the sides. And some of the pieces have splits in them or knots in them and I just kind of went with it. Once I had it cut out, took it over to the router table and rounded over the edges and the corners. And then I hit it with a sander to kind of smooth out uh, those edges. And I think I got it down to just 220. It's kind of important to get as smooth as I can so that the uh, coins roll uh, pretty well with the uh, least amount of friction. Next, I grabbed another piece that had a split down the middle, but I figured I'll just cut that out and use those for the, um, the uprights. So there I cut out the split and I tossed that, but then I take those over to the miter saw and I kind of freehand an angle uh, because the faceplate needs to be beveled back so that the coins stay on the little runner. Um, here I am cutting them to height and then hitting them on the router table just to kind of round over the edges a little bit. And uh, next step is, uh, oh, I the angle was just a little uh, too tall. So I just cut off the tops there and a little too small for my sander, electric sander, so I had to do that by hand. Next piece is uh, um, the base and it's a piece of live edge maple. So I cut off the live edge there and I think there was a cracked nut in the corner so I trimmed that off right there too. And last bit of work on the router was just rounding over the edges on one of the sides and then the bottom can sit flat. Uh, sanding that real quick and then I think we're ready to um, assemble the uprights to the base. So in order to do that I use my calipers and I uh, mark exactly where the um, holes need to be to drill for each of the uprights. So I go ahead and I drill those through and then what I'll do is I'll countersink um, screws in from the bottom to attach uh, the upright. So I have to find just the right size drill bit here um, that can accommodate the size of the screw head that I'm going to be using. So I drill those and now here I am jigging up uh, some clamps so I can hold the base at just the right spot on the leg that's in the vise so that I can uh, get those holes in, in just the right locations. Gluing it up and putting the screws in there and tighten it up and I use the same technique uh, to do the other one. So once uh, both uprights are on there it's time to glue on the uh, faceplate and that was actually a little tricky uh, because of that bevel of you know that it's uh, angled backwards so it's kind of kept sliding around but I used uh, just regular spring clamps and uh, wedged it in there and um, it seemed to be okay. Uh, I mean it uh, it moved around a little bit but uh, I just kind of adjusted it until it firmed up and it was fine. Here I am measuring the thickness of a nickel. It's the thickest coin that we have to deal with, giving it just a little bit more room. So I think it went up to just about an eighth of an inch. And here I'm using my thin strip jig to rip a eighth inch piece of cherry which we'll use for the runner. So once I have that cut off I um, oh here's my shop buddy. I had to get a picture of him. Um, I take the runner and I cut it in half and then the next tricky thing was to uh, find just the right angle because you don't want the coins to roll too fast um, and you don't want them to roll too slow so that they stop. So once I found the right angle, I went ahead and I glued it on there and just uh, attached it with uh, spring clamps on the sides and then a whole bunch of other clamps everywhere else because it's uh, pretty important that it is flat against that uh, face plate and it didn't seem to be cooperating with me uh, by just clamping it on the side so I had to kind of clamp it everywhere. So once it started to dry, I scraped off the uh, residual glue 
um, with uh, just a chisel. And uh, here I am setting uh, up the thin strip jig again so I can cut another piece that we can use for the coin ramp and the coin insert uh, section. So to do this, what I did is I measured the diameter of quarter and gave myself a little bit of extra play and then cut that in half and then set my compass to that radius and then drew a quarter circle. And then I cut this out on the bandsaw, at least the best I could. I couldn't make that turn for some reason, so I uh, just did the best I could and then I cleaned up the rest with a file in the vise. And it is important to get this as sharp as you can um, because the coins are going to be rolling down there. You don't want it to uh, bump anything. Trimming it to final width and uh, then it's time to, to glue it on there at the top of the runner. Once that gets glued on there, uh, I uh, take a sharp chisel and I just trim off the rest of the runner that's protruding off of the side of the face plates on on the front and the back um, and got that looking nice. Then I stuck some extra pieces together, glued those up, and, and I'm going to make a coin insert box. So I mark just the right spot where the coins are working great and um, then I take it over to the disc sander here and I clean up all the edges and held it up against the back of the belt to give it a nice curve. Using a utility knife to clean up the whiskers and burrs and then I'm ready to glue this on. Got some tight areas to get the glue into, so I just use a, a pencil. And then I line it up with the pencil marks that I had before and make sure it works with the coins going in. So here I create a zero clearance uh, on the bandsaw with a one board, and I cut four little triangles, which each need, needed to be sanded by hand. Uh, but then these are what's going to be glued on the faceplate so that they kick the um, coins off. It's right about here where I realized, oops, I screwed up. Um, I didn't make the faceplate tall enough uh, to accommodate quarters, so I'd have to do something different. So I move on to nickels. So I put the first little triangle there just above the height of a penny so that pennies can still slide under it. And then I move on and I do uh, the pennies and then I do dimes last. So the one for the dimes can just be put pretty much anywhere um, less than the height of a dime. For the quarter I had to make this piece a little bit different. I, I know it's tacky but um, I goofed. So uh, I glue that onto the top and put it right there at the beginning there so that a nickel can slide underneath it. And there we go. <laughs> it works. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun making it. Uh, be sure to check out my other videos. I think you'll like them too. And if you haven't already, uh, subscribe and like. And, uh, and we'll see you next time. All right? Are you serious?